This video is going to show you how to load an image and um, and use colors to display uh, categorical information um, or the names of land cover types. And I'm going to try to get my cursor back. Sometimes I really have to fight with uh, Earth Engine to be able to add some stuff. I don't know if you guys have that issue, but imagine you might. And uh, anyway, so there it is. And then I'm going to copy the snippet and paste it in. And I gave you the viz um, parameters here, um, just because I think these colors work out pretty well. And uh, these are these hex codes, these six digit strings to just define red, green, blue colors. But we'll, we'll talk about that in the future. Don't worry about too much right now. Let's just worry about where can we get this land cover data set. So I'm gonna go to awesome um, GE community data sets. I'm just going to type that into Google and you should get this awesome GEE community catalog. Um, the Earth Engine community, for whatever reason, has a tendency to really be Lego and everything is awesome. But um, but here it is. It is, it is, you know, admittedly kind of awesome. It is a kind of an alternative data catalog that is um, kind of maintained by the community of users for Earth Engine rather than Google itself. And so it complements the, the Google data catalog that we've used previously to grab data. And I'm gonna go under, so there's a ton of data in here and we're gonna be working with, with this and the Earth Engine Google data catalog um, as we go through the course. But for today, we wanna to go to regional land use and land cover. And we're gonna cruise down to the Vermont high resolution land cover from 2016. So one of the reasons the prompt at the beginning of the of the tutorial says, you know, where were the best grasslands in 2016? Is because our data are all our analysis is all dependent on this land cover data set that represented the land cover in 2016. So that's a description of the data, and then there's often this kind of GIF, and it was just made by some good people up in UVM, and you can go here if you want to get more information about it. What we want here is basically this thing right here. We could copy this snippet. And I'm just going to copy it over here, just like kind of the, the primer. I'm going to go back over to here and um, I'm going to go in the line under this and say paste, but I'm too lazy to type that out each time. So I just want to call it LC rather than the Vermont base land cover 2016. And, uh, and so there's the, uh, yeah, uh, there it is. And if I hit run up, let's, fill this out. So I'm going to say land cover and I'm going to say LC viz, right, as my visual um, parameter parameters. And then I'm going to say this is my 2016 land cover. And then I'm going to say outside of the string false. And I'm going to hit run. And what we should now be able to get is when we throw that on, it should relatively quickly draw this land cover data set. And just to kind of, um, does it tell you the resolution here? Uh, somewhere in here, there should be, um, it's very high resolution. It's like a meter or it might even be a half meter, but the pixels are uh, very, very fine on this thing. And so um, what, what the Earth Engine data catalog is helping us do is if we went to um, Vermont high resolution land cover and went to here, um, this is the same data set from VCGI and it's a, uh, yeah, it's 0.5 meter resolution. So it's pretty crazy. There's the Vermont base land cover and don't do this, but if we hit download, it's going to like try to down this thing, download this thing as a zip. It's too big to, for Google to really deal with it. I'm going to kind of cancel out of here. But the idea is that it would take a long time and a ton of hardware to download this thing onto our laptop so that we could use it in like QGIS. And one of the, one of the real kind of beauties of Earth Engine is just how quick it is to load this data and start working with it um, because we're, it's all in the cloud. Right, so for this for the whole state, it's really beautiful, um, high resolution land cover data set um, that we are going to be working with. And let's see, did I want to tell you anything else about it? If I go 
down here, I'm gonna save. Oh, I have this thing dot projection. So here's a couple of things I should say um, over here. We printed out the LC and the first thing to notice is that this thing is just an image. It's not an image collection. It's just a single image that contains the land cover. It has a single band. The band is really originally named B1 for band one. So if you wanted to, um, you could do something like, it's good practice to, to say rename and call it like land cover. It's just that your band names are not gonna be able to have spaces. So you have to go underscore. And if we did that, we'd say that this first thing is our land cover and there's the band that stores that data. There's only one band here, so it's gonna be kind of, it's gonna make life a little bit easier and we won't have to select the band as we work with it because there's only one. So it's always gonna assume that that's the band that we wanna work for, or work with. And uh, the other thing I asked here is to print out the projection. And what I just wanted to show you is that this is the EPSG 32145. I think we've talked about that in a previous video, but if I put quotes and um, enter it, EPSG 32145, you'll see that this is, it's basically the Vermont state plane. So this is a projection or a coordinate system that is designed um, to minimize distortion in Vermont. We'll talk more about this on, on Thursday, but I just wanted to point that out, that the land cover data set that we're gonna pull in here is um, stored in this um, Vermont state plane um, projection. And I just also want you to kind of like get, start getting familiar with EPSG 32145, that number just know that this is referring to a, a, a projected coordinate system that's um, particularly good for Vermont. We're gonna use that later on in this tutorial when we have to make um, distance and area-based measurements so that we don't inherit the distortion in the, uh, in the Mercator that we've um, looked at in previous labs. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna wait for that to go and then I'm gonna keep moving on.